following is a brief excerpt from Michael Scott Earle's The Ultimate Terrorist. Mike calls this selection Muslim Spin Doctors and Quranic Context. We hear a lot about context. It seems like every time one of these Islamic spin doctors is questioned about violence in the Quran, he quickly counters with the old, you need to understand the context defense. On these tapes, we're going to talk a lot about context. Before we do, though, let me share with you just a few examples of how many of these so-called experts are themselves guilty of taking passages out of context. Let's start with an example that pops up over and over in the media. Here's a scene. The host of a popular news program, say a Chris Matthews or a Bill O'Reilly, has on his program some Islamic expert. And he confronts this expert with some of these kill the infidel passages. Almost without exception, the expert insists that we must understand these passages in their proper context. He then assures us that Islam is a peaceful religion. And to prove it, he tells us about a verse in the Quran that says that when somebody kills even a single person, it is as though he had killed all of mankind. Have you ever heard that one? Now, for some reason, I have yet to figure out. This is usually where the probing ends. I find that astonishing. Imagine that one of these hard-nosed investigative reporter types has on his show some guy running for political office. Imagine, too, that during a speech made on national TV, this candidate told his audience that he'd like to see his opponent murdered. Our hard-nosed investigative reporter confronts the candidate about this statement and asks, what's this about you wanting to see your opponent murdered? To which the candidate replies, oh, oh, you need to understand my comments in their proper context. You see, I said that on Tuesday. But on Monday, I gave another speech in which I said I really like my opponent. That's his answer. To which our hard-nosed investigative reporter replies, Okay, fine. And then moves on to the next subject. I would call that some pretty lame reporting. Yet this very thing happens all the time. When these Muslim apologists essentially dodge the issue of violence in the Quran by simply quoting some other passage that isn't violent. And the hosts let these guys get away with it. <laughs> so much for hardballs and no spin zones. Let's you and I probe a little deeper into this matter. And let's begin by considering this passage that the spin doctors keep referring to. The one that says that when somebody kills another person, it is as though he had killed all of mankind. The passage in question is found in Surah 5, verse 35. Here's what the text actually says. Quote, For this cause have we ordained unto the children of Israel, that he who slayeth anyone, unless it be a person guilty of manslaughter, or of spreading disorders in the land, shall be as though he had slain all of mankind. Unquote. Now perhaps the first thing we notice about this passage is that the council was directed not to Muslims, but to the children of Israel, to the Jews. Also, notice that the verse does say that it's okay to kill some people. For example, those guilty of manslaughter and those guilty of spreading disorders in the land. Whatever that might mean. But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part comes when we look at the very next verse. Verse 36. The verse that never comes up on TV. Verse 36 tells us what we are to do with those guilty of spreading disorders in the land. Verse 36 reads, quote, The recompense of those who war against God and his apostle and go about to commit disorders on the earth shall be that they shall be slain or crucified or have their alternate hands and feet cut off or be banished from the land. This their disgrace in this world and in the next a great torment shall be theirs. Unquote. Now let's not forget that this verse is part of a larger passage that the experts are presenting to us as proof that Islam is not violent. Now frankly, I don't know how you square nonviolent 
with nailing people to crosses and chopping off their hands and feet. But then, the experts never really tell us about verse 36, do they? They stop with verse 35. In other words, they take the passage out of context. They do the very thing that they insist that the rest of us ought not to do. I'd call that a bit hypocritical on their part. You've just heard an excerpt from Michael Scott Earl's The God Game. The full presentation is available in audio cassette and can be purchased online at Mike's website at www.recentworks.com.